In section 5.6, we're going to take a look at inverse trig functions and trying to take the derivatives of those uh, inverse trig functions. So to take the derivative of an inverse trig function, uh, we're just going to follow this table in terms of uh, the uh, rules or the formulas, if you want to look at them that way, for taking the derivatives of all the inverse trig functions. Uh, but before we do some practice problems, just want to make sure we all understand what an inverse trig function is. So let's suppose I have this equation sine y equals x, and let's pretend I wanted to solve for y. Well, the first thing we'd have to do is we'd have to get rid of the sine on the left side that's kind of trapping that y there. So the way we undo the sine function is we would need to arc sine it. And of course, if we do something to one side, we would also have to do it to the other. So the arc sine and the sine essentially cancel each other out and you're just left with y. And then when you take the arc sine of x, we're just left with arc sine of x. So when you see this thing, I'm not sure if you recall this from uh, pre-cal, but when you see y equals arc sine of x, what it's saying is that y is the angle that when you take the sine of it is equal to x. So careful, the thing that's on the left side of that equation is your angle. So be careful with the notation and the way you interpret arc sine and arc cosine and all the other uh, inverse trig functions. One little note to make, uh, we have the alternate notation of putting that negative one superscript, it's not a power, but a superscript to indicate an inverse, uh, like you saw me talking about in 5.3 with inverse functions. We're never going to use this uh, notation only because that negative one power could be misconstrued uh, to be a power, and we don't want to have that possibility. So we're going to use the alternate notation uh, of arc sine instead of that negative one notation. Okay, so let's attempt to take some derivatives here. You'll notice that all of these formulas in the chart up here have a u in them. So we're, um, assume, or we're assuming, really, that all of these formulas have, uh, have had the chain rule applied to them. And of course that is true. You'll notice that all of these formulas have a u prime in them. So of course these are all good for when you see stuff uh, and not a plain x. So here we have the uh, function arc sine of x to the fourth minus one. So to take the derivative, we're gonna just use the arc sine formula above here. And there's really not much to think about here in a sense, it's kind of almost too easy. Once you identify the u, you're just gonna put that right there in the formula. And in the top of the fraction, just uh, put u prime. So we know u in this case is x to the fourth minus one. So we know in the bottom of the derivative, it's going to be the square root of one minus u squared, or x minus four, x to the fourth minus one squared. And the top, we need to put u prime, which is simple because that's just four x cubed, and that's it. Um, so again, almost too simple in a sense. Uh, if we want to take the derivative of arc tan of sine, we would need to, of course, use uh, this formula here. And just like the previous one, once you identify what u is, it's just a matter of plugging that into the formula and then putting u prime in the top of that fraction. So u in this case is sine. Uh, it's not a plain x on the inside of arc tan. So it's going to be sine of x as our u. So in the bottom of our fraction, it's 1 plus u squared or 1 plus sine squared. In the top of our fraction, we need to put u prime, and in this case, that's just cosine of x. So that's our final answer. In this example, we're trying to take another derivative of arc tan, and by the way, I should mention this now. Uh, I think really the only one you're going to need memorized for sure is this one. Um, it's the one that has come out on the AP test in the past, and not that these other ones are not useful, um, but you know the ones that we want to commit to memory are the ones that we really need for the AP test, so uh, you might want to circle that one and make a note that you're definitely going to need that one memorized. Okay, so the derivative of arc tan. We'll practice that one again since that seems to be the important one. Uh, the first thing I think we should do is change that square root to a power, and then realize that that's not a plain x on the inside of arc tan. Um, it's stuff, it's not that plain x, so we have to call that u. 
So we can jump straight to using the formula. It's going to be 1 plus u squared. So that's nice and simple once we identify what u is. Now we have to take the derivative of u so we can plug in u prime into the top of that fraction. We'll bring the power down, reduce the power by 1, and it's possible, I suppose, to take this and just put it right here, but that's going to produce a bit of a mess. So I think what we need to do is simplify our u prime. That negative 1 half power we can send to the bottom of the fraction, and the 2 will be down there. And of course, that 1 half power will become positive, and we can change that back to a square root. All we need to do next is take the denominator of this top fraction and move it to the bottom of the overall denominator. And of course, all of that would need to be in parentheses because we're going to multiply those two things. The other note here is, of course, we can simplify um, the square root of x squared. The square root of x squared is just, of course, x. So very straightforward if you're taking the derivatives of inverse trig functions, assuming you know these formulas. But again, luckily, you really just need arc 10 um, memorized. The other ones, if you ever see them, uh, you just need to know where to look in your notes so you can figure out which uh, formula it is.